Hey everybody, this is uh, Darren Spader again with the uh, Mercury News, East Bay Times, Bay Area News Group, here with Evan Weback and Mike Lefkow. It is week five of the high school football season, and we have um, 16 games that we're picking. We're actually picking a bonus game this week. Um, should be fun, but uh, as always, before we get to our picks, we'll discuss uh some of the things we saw from the previous weekend and a, and a quick look ahead to uh, the upcoming weekend and maybe a big picture look at the season as a whole after four weeks. Um, Evan, I mean, I know that uh, last week you had a great week on your picks, 13 and two, but one of the games you picked was uh, uh, Cathedral Catholic over De La Salle. You were at uh, De La Salle last Friday night. Um, what were your impressions of a, a real De La Salle game with the crowd, uh, the team playing well after that rough start? W what did you think? Well, I learned my lesson not to pick against the uh, the Bay Area teams against against visitors from out of town. Uh, my other pick was uh, Bellerman, who uh, that's who true, ended up beating the Central Catholic from Modesto. Um, but De La Salle, my my gosh, what what an impressive win, you know. I, I went my I went into the stadium and I was blown away at first by the size of uh, Cathedral. You know they, they were clearly an elite level team. Uh, afterward, Justin Allen Boss said, "You know you can't blame me for picking against them against a team like that." Um, and it, it looked like they were in trouble for a little while there. You know they got down fourteen nothing the second straight week that they've spotted an opponent uh, two touch two touchdowns. But this week they responded uh, and it was you know just like that in a snap really. Right. They get they get an interception and then Charles Greer goes for a touchdown and then an interception and another touchdown the next play. Uh, and it's just the game changes in a span of five minutes. He had a huge game. I mean, over 200 yards. I, uh, Mike and I have been around long enough that, you know, we knew probably not to pick against De La Salle. We didn't pick against them last week. Mike, did you, you anticipate them bouncing back right from the St. Francis loss? Yeah, I've been around a lot. I mean, I've been around since Lattisor was uh, starting out as the coach. And I've learned that with De La Salle, they, they might have a hiccup on the road now and then. But in a game like last week, they it would have been a one heck of a, an upset, if, in my mind, if Cathedral had beat them. They were going to come out ready. They were going to come out fired up. And, and um, I didn't expect them to win 49-14, especially after they got down 14-zip. Or, or maybe it was 49-21, but um, I, I had a feeling Dale Sal was going to come back and, and win impressively. What do you guys think this does big picture-wise? I mean, De La Sal now has, you know, they have the loss to St. Francis. They still have Folsom on the schedule as well as that team from Baltimore that's coming in, and then and then they wrap it up with four uh, e-ball games. But uh, if De La Sal wins out, I mean, Evan, do you, do you think you, you know, De La Sal could be in that uh, – open division state championship game, or is it going to take something happening um, with Sarah and St. Francis for that to happen if De La Salle were to win out? Yeah, well, I mean, if De La Salle wins out, that means they beat Folsom. That's a, that's a huge win and knocks out probably their top competition for that for that slot. But that does bring it down to St. Francis and Sarah. Uh, and are they going to make it through the WCAL schedule undefeated? I mean, one of them, they got to play each other and they got to play a lot of other tough competition between Bellarmine and SI in a very strong year for the WCAL. Um, and Valley Christian. And Valley Christian. So, I mean, not only that, we're, we're talking about the seven game WCAL season, but then they have to do it all over again in a condensed CCS playoff, uh, you know, an eight, eight bracket playoff that no doubt will include uh, Sarah and St. Francis, probably Bellarmine, probably Valley, maybe SI. I mean, it, it could be a and plus Los Gatos, mm. plus you know Salinas or Palma. <laughs> so there are some. Uh, this is a good year for the CCS. I'm just looking at it, looking at our rankings. I mean, in most years we look at our rankings, especially in the top ten, and it's filled with teams from the East Bay. Um, there's a lot of teams in our top ten from uh, the CCS, and most notably the WCAL. Um, Mike, do you get that sense? I mean, do you think this is a a stronger year at this year at this point for the CCS? Yeah, I think the CCS is, uh, especially on top, it's stronger. I mean, you look at that, but a uh, possible eighteen bracket for the playoffs. I was thinking, sitting here thinking, why do they have to do the playoffs over again? I mean, if you win during the regular season, isn't that enough? 
then you have to prove it again in the playoffs. But, <clears throat> I mean, I think right now it's St. Francis and Sarah kind of hold the key to who's going to go to state. Right. But then, you know, there's a team I saw on uh, on Friday night that, uh, that has the magic going again. I mean, Bellarmine, um, they don't have the size that St. Francis and Sarah has. They, uh, but they have a lot of speed. Uh, that would be my one concern in, in matchups against those two teams between Bellarmine and Sarah and Bellarmine and St. Francis is that, that Bellarmine's size um, and, the, and the fact that Sarah and St. Francis both have speed. So I think Bellarmine was able to neutralize um, uh, Central Catholic over the weekend because Bellarmine used a speed. And I'm not sure that will be the case, you know, when we get down the line to Sarah and St. Francis, but there's a lot of football left between now and then. Um, although that first uh, that first big test for Bellarmine comes up on October second. Although I'm sure they're not looking past Reardon, which is three and zero. I mean, do we know anything about Reardon? What do you think, Mike? I mean, you know, is 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 Reardon capable of an upset uh, on Friday night at San Jose City? No, I, I don't think so. Not the way Bellarmine is playing. I mean, Reardon. They have a nice – Reardon has a nice victory over Justin Siena. But I am i don't think Justin Siena could beat any of the top teams in the West Cal right now. So I think Reardon – I mean, they beat Tamalpais by a touchdown. And McClyman's beat Tamalpais by 50-something points. Right. So that tells you right there the difference between the teams. I think Bellarmine wins comfortably. I'm making that prediction a little too soon. But I think Bellarmine wins comfortably. And um, we'll find out about Bellarmine when they get down the road and start playing the Sarahs and the St. Francis. A week from Saturday in San Mateo, October 2nd. Yeah. I um, know. Bellarmine at Sarah. That'll be a huge game. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um, I was very impressed with Bellarmine. I mean, I'm very, I've been very impressed with who they've beaten. I mean, Menlo Atherton, then on the road against San Leandro, 41 to six, and then to beat a really good Central Catholic team that could have won that game. I mean, they were behind all game and they just kept, as, as they showed in the spring against Bellman, they just kept coming and coming and coming and it, and it ended with an interception in the end zone. Um, so hats off to Bellman for going three and zero going into league. Um, Evan, you were, uh, the next day you went out to, uh, Menlo school in Atherton to see, um, Sergio Beltran. And, uh, you got to talk to his offensive coordinator who happens to be a former Bellarmine quarterback. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that before we get to the picks? Yeah. Former Bellarmine quarterback and a former SEC quarterback too. It's Austin Carter Samuels, uh, a name that many Bay Area football fans should recognize between him and his, uh, his younger brother who also went on to play at Washington, uh, uh KJ. Um, but he he's made it back to Menlo School, and and he and Sergio have a, have a real cohesion. Um, they say that it comes down to the trust between them. Um, but it, it was a tough game for Beltran this weekend against Terra Nova. You know, he really struggled against their physical defense, and he took some really big hits. And uh, afterward, you know, uh, Austin Carter Samuels took him in front of the team and commended him for being the light their light uh, for the last two years, and then you know took him aside. Uh, privately and, and had a word with him for for a little while after the game because it, it really was a tough game and, and Carter Samuel says he sees a lot of himself uh, in Beltron too and Beltron what a start to the season with 18 touchdowns and more than a thousand yards passing through their first four games all wins no doubt very impressive uh, they've beaten a couple of uh, Bay Division teams right I mean they're in the they're in the Ocean Division of the PAL so they're in the Middle Division but that's the division that Half Moon Bay came out of in 2019 and got placed in that top eight bracket in CCS uh, I don't know if Menlo wants to be there I mean, <laughs> I think Menlo wants to be a little bit lower season that you know Sergio Beltran and Menlo School could compete with maybe we can win the Bay division this year. And they're certainly holding that, holding up to that, that those expectations with, I think three wins over Bay division teams so far. Very impressive. Very, they, I think they probably still have sacred heart prep, which is usually their season finale. So yeah. that, that will be a big game down the road. Um, anything else you guys want to touch on before we uh, get to the picks? Let's get to the picks. All right. Game one on the list, St. Ignatius. Uh, going to Mountain View to play St. Francis. It will be St. Francis's first game since its historic win over De La Salle two weeks ago. Uh, SI beat St. Francis 35-26 in 2019 when uh, SI shared the WCAL championship with Sarah and Valley Christian. Uh, Evan, who you got in this game? 
Man, the St. Francis team is too good. How do you pick against them after beating De La Salle? Right. <laughs> Lefty? Oh, I'm going to go with St. Francis, but uh, I hope they, they've they got to avoid any kind of letdown, that's for sure. <clears throat> I'm planning on being there. I'm taking St. Francis too, but it'll be interesting to see how they uh, how they play after that big win. Uh, it was probably good that they had a bye to kind of get that win, be able to celebrate that win for a week or so, and then get ready for SI and the WCAL opener. Uh, game two on our list, like we touched on this a little bit, uh, Reardon at 3-0. Going up against Bellarmine, three and zero, San Jose City College on uh, Friday night. Um, I just think Bellarmine has too much going for it right now. They're very confident. I I can't see them losing this game. I'm taking Bellarmine. I assume that's what you guys are also taking. Yeah, I already said I'm taking Bellarmine. So yep. give me the bells. Finally, Evan. <laughs> some of the, some of the coaches pointed out after the game that uh, maybe Evan will eventually pick us. <laughs> so you got him. Uh, game three on the list, El Cerrito going to uh, Danville to play Monta Vista. Uh, Monta Vista 3-0 now under C.J. Anderson with uh, Dylan Devitt. He's got 10 touchdown passes. Hats off to Monta Vista for putting his stats on Max Preps. We like that. 10 <laughs> touchdown passes for Dylan Devitt. Uh, El Cerrito at 3-1 and one with its only loss, a 6 nothing setback in the season opener against Marin Catholic. I'll let you go first, Evan. Who you got? I think El Cerrito's defense is one of the best in the in the region. This is going to be a, probably the first real test for C.J. Anderson and and going to be some real proving ground for him. Monta Vista at home uh, is tough to pick against, but you'll see a theme throughout my picks. I'm going with the defense and El Cerrito. Lefty? I'm going to uh, take Monta Vista. I think it's going to be a nail biter. I think it's going to be a low scoring game. But Monta Vista at home is the reason I'm going to go with the uh, Mustangs. Uh, I'm with Evan. I've circled El Cerrito here. I'm taking El Cerrito to hand C.J. Anderson his first loss at Monta Vista, but I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's going to be a blowout of uh, you know. It, I think it's going to be really tight. It's going to be a defensive battle. I see a score somewhere in the neighborhood of 14-13, 14-10. Something like that. So, uh, game four on the list: Heritage at two and two going to De Anza at one and two. Uh, De Anza beat Moreau uh, with losses to McClymonds and Cardinal Newman, and Heritage has uh, beaten Granada and James Logan, and has losses to uh, Dublin and Clovis East. Um, I'm taking De Anza. Who you guys got? I'm gonna go with uh, De Anza as well. Yeah, Deans as a team, I think, is better than his record. There you go. So we're all picking there. Ensenal, Mount Eden. Uh, Ensenal is uh, two and one over Mount Eden in the in the Max Preps era. I think all of these games have been played recently, and that includes a 35-14 win uh, in their last meeting in 2017. Uh, I'm taking Mount Eden at home. Who you got, Lefty? I'm going to go with Ensenal. I think Ensenal's got a pretty good team this season. Yeah, their quarterback, <laughs> Garrett Dethridge, has, has a great arm. He's off to a great start. I'm going with Ensenal, too. There you go. Uh, Doherty Valley, a surprise 3-0 lefty. Uh, going up against Deer Valley, 2-1. Uh, and one. Um, Who you got, lefty? DV. <laughs> No, I'm taking uh, Doherty Valley. I think Doherty Valley's got a pretty good team this year. They get them in in uh, San Ramon. I think I think uh, Doherty, the Wildcats, win. Yeah, give me Doherty Valley too. Uh, that makes us that makes three of us. I'm going Doherty Valley as well. Um, Granada at uh, Burrell Field in San Leandro, taking on a San Leandro team that has lost two in a row after opening with wins over Cardinal Newman and Freedom. Uh, Granada at one and three. I think San Leandro bounces back big time. Uh, they lost a heartbreaker to Campo Lindo last week. They came back from two touchdowns down to tie it up and then lost uh, 34 27. I, I can't see the Pirates losing three in a row. I'm taking them. Evan. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I think it's three of us for San Leandro this time. <laughs> San Leandro, Evan? Yeah, across the board. Across the board. All right. Oh, this is a huge one. And this is, <laughs> you talk about defense. 
Foothill against Amador Valley. Amador Valley has three consecutive shutouts and has allowed seven points all season. They're I've going up against the pick here a little bit. They're going up against a Foothill team that in, in its three wins is averaging 43.3 points per game. Something's got to give here. Lefty, what gives? Oh, I think uh, Amador wins this game. It's going to be a close one. I think it'll be on the defensive side. Um, Amador's had some injury problems, and we'll, we'll see if they can overcome that. But uh, I think uh, Amador prevails. It's a non-league game, but they're both in the E-ball. One's in the uh, – Amador's in the uh, – which which division? Amador's Amador? in the mountain and Foothill's in the valley. In the valley. But they're uh, but both it's, in Pleasanton. It's, Battle for, Battle of Pleasanton. Um, Evan, who you got? Like I said, defense wins out. Give me Amador Valley. That's three of us going Amador Valley. I like their defense. I can't go up against a team that has three consecutive shutouts. And now um, you know who's going to win, though. What's that? Now you oh, know who's going to win. Oh, well, Jerry McDonald will be there to tell us all about it. He's going to cover that game. Uh, Liberty Dublin, that's at Dublin, Liberty one and two with its one win against Campo losses to Los Gatos and, uh, Monte Vista, uh, Dublin coming in at three and one. It's one loss was to Amador Valley by uh, a seven to nothing score. Um, I'm going Liberty to go to two and two in this game. Yeah, Lefty. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pick Liberty in this one. I think it'll be close, but I think it, Liberty wins. Yeah, Liberty's played a couple of close games, and I think they'll be in for another one. Uh, that said, I'm, I'm going Dublin. You're going Dublin. Wow. Oh. There you go. Uh, this was a tough one for me to pick. They played These, these teams played in the spring. Uh, Las Lomas at San Ramon Valley this time, but in the spring they played in Walnut Creek, and uh, that was uh, San Ramon Valley winning 35-28. to 28. Uh, both teams are off to good starts. Uh, Las Lomas is three and one, and uh, San Ramon Valley is two and one. Um, I'm going the Wolves at home, taking San Ramon Valley, but I think it's going to be really close. I, I, Doug Longero does a great job there at Las Lomas, and uh, I think this is going to be a terrific game. Uh, Evan, what do you think? Yeah, you saw Las Lomas make a big move in our poll this week. Uh, one of the biggest movers after a big hot start to the season. Um, but I think San Ramon Valley is in for a big game. I think they, we might have we might have a breakout uh, for the Wolves this year after a couple tight games and a couple losses or a loss. Lefty? Yeah, having seen San Ramon Valley, I don't think they've played up to their potential yet. They, I agree with Evan. They could have a breakout game. Uh, they've got a lot of talent. And we'll see if they can put it together this week. I'm going to go with SRV. Like yeah, the game I saw, I saw them against O'Dowd. I mean, they missed a couple of big plays. I mean, there were some pass plays that were were open and just missed for, for which would have been easy touchdowns. I don't know if that was the case when you saw them against Central Catholic, but uh, yeah, they, I mean, I, if if they had played a little better, they could have won that game. And in that that was on a Thursday night up in Modesto. Yeah. I mean, San Ramon's got some serious talent. Yep. Um, so we're all going with the Wolves. Uh, in this next game, game 11, Live Oak against Oak Grove on the road in San Jose. Uh, it's a league opener, BVAL Mount Hamilton division. Uh, Live Oak is just 2 and 10 against Oak Grove in the Mount Pleasant, in the, in the Max Preps era. But I can't see Oak Grove, which lost 55 nothing to St. Francis and Edged Hill. 25-13. I can't see them beating Live Oak. I'm taking Live Oak in this game. Yeah, I think Live Oak's going to be 3-10 and 10 against Oak Grove after to, after Friday. I'm going to go Live Oak. Two wins in the last three years for Live Oak. It's been a lot more competitive recently, and I'm going Live Oak, too. You're going Live Oak. Evan, you picked the games we're doing, and this one was a little tougher. Overfelt at Piedmont Hills. Um, Overfelt's 2-0-1. Oh, um, never got – never – found the time to call the officials to ask what happened in that tie. There's not supposed to be ties anymore in high school football. We're supposed to have this, we got the overtime rule, right? That where they play uh, extra session, but there was a tie between Overfelt and Santa Clara, but both teams and their wins. I mean, Overfelt has shutouts over YB and Gunderson and Piedmont Hills has shutouts over 
Willow Glen and Independence. Um, I'm taking Overfelt on the road to beat Piedmont Hills. Yeah, this was a tough one. I'm going Overfelt too. You're going Overfelt. All right. I'm going to be the contrarian. I'm going to go with Piedmont Hills. Uh, why, Lefty? Well, I, I think Piedmont Hills is beat. They beat what? Willow Glen and Independence? Yeah. When I was looking this morning, I liked the teams they had beaten a little bit better. They're at home. And I think this is a, a year that Piedmont Hills gets them. I mean, Overfelt's a good team. But I think Piedmont Hills wins this one. All right. Uh, game 13 on the list. Leland at Silver Creek. Silver Creek coming off a loss to Milpitas. Uh, Leland uh, has wins over Aragon and Pioneer and then a, a loss to Wilcox, which there's no shame there. Uh, I think Leland has too much for Silver Creek. I'm taking Leland. Evan, you agree? Yeah, I'm a big fan of this Leland team. Um, yeah. uh, that makes three. I'm going to go with Leland also. Okay, these next two are kind of tough, uh, especially this one. McClyman's 3-0 against Menlo Atherton 1-2. and We know Menlo Atherton is loaded with talent. Max loaded with talent. Um, first meeting in the Max Preps era, I think. Um, I'm taking Mac to stay undefeated, go 4-0. Evan, am I wrong? Yeah, I mean, this is one of the most anticipated games of the weekend. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it how it ends. I think both these teams are loaded. I think only McClymans has played up to its talent so far. Uh, I'm taking MA. I think this might be a breakout game for them, too. Lefty? I'm going to go with Mac. I think uh, this is going to be a great game, and this is a coin flip. And when I called the uh, heads, it came up Mac. <laughs> I'm going Mac too. So that's, uh, yeah. Uh, game 15. We also have a bonus game, but th this is the 15th game on the list. Wilcox at one and three against Los Gatos 4-0. Uh, Evan, you were there when the teams met the spring in Santa Clara and Wilcox jumped out to, I think, a 19-0 lead and ended up losing 20-19. to As Los Gatos went undefeated and they seem to just continue right along this fall so far. Wilcox, I mean, that one and three record, I I don't know what to make of Wilcox. I mean, you know, they only lost a pit by five. And we all thought that score was going to be wider. Um, I'm not going against Los Gatos in this game, but I think it could be close. I'm taking the – but I'm taking Los Gatos. Uh, lefty, what do you think? Yeah, I think Los Gatos wins. And uh, – I think Will Scatos might win comfortably. I think they've got a really good team this year, and I think Wilcox is just a little bit down. These two teams literally came in tied in our preseason poll, but they've been separated uh, by 20-plus spots now as Los Gatos has gotten off to an undefeated start and Wilcox has kind of stumbled. Um, but, I mean, this was probably the best game I saw all year last spring, and it should be another good one. Um, I can't go against Los Gatos, though. But you think it's going to be closer than what Mike is making it sound like it could be a – I think it'll be, be more, more than one point, uh, uh, probably more than one – maybe more than one score. But Might be two scores. Yeah. Two scores. Yeah, I'm not predicting that it's going to be a, a route, but I, I could see Los Gatos winning by two or three scores. Okay. Uh, we added a bonus game to the list. So Thursday night game, uh, Lee writing an eight-game winning streak. They went undefeated in the spring, like like Los Gatos, and they're off to a three and zero start um, in the fall season. They're going up against Westmont nearby. They're very close to each other. Westmont's also three and zero. I went back and looked to see how these teams have done um, historically over the last seventeen years. Westmont is six and seven against Lee. Uh, Lee beat them last spring, twenty one to seven. I think it's going to be tight, but I think Lee stretches its winning streak to nine games. I think Lee is going to win on the road on Thursday to go to 4-0. and um, Mike, who do you got? I'm going to go with the home team on this one. I think Westmont ends Lee's winning streak. I, I mean, you look at how the teams they've played, everything's pretty even. So I just am um, going to go with the home field advantage on this one. Wow. Okay. Evan? 
Make it nine games. Give me Lee. You're going to go Lee. All right. Anything else you guys want to add? I mean, Evan, you had a great week, except picking against De La Salle and Bellerman. Could have gone 15-0, and 0, um, but you didn't. You went 13-2, and 2, but that was still good enough to pad your lead to uh, two games over me and uh, three games over our defending champion. So you got to be feeling pretty good. Feeling great and uh, feeling even better as we see uh, more people read and subscribe to our to our content on uh, mercurynews.com, eastbaytimes.com. A lot of what we talked about today between Bellerman and Sergio Beltran, uh, you can read about that in Monday Morning Lights every Monday where you'll get a lot of inside information from the weekend's action. No doubt. Uh, make sure you get that digital subscription. Uh, you can check out, I mean, we have a, we have a lot of content or every day of the week. You can't go a day, you can't go a morning, you know, by 8 a.m. and looking on our website without seeing something new. And today it's the rankings. Tomorrow will be this video or today. Whenever I post it, when am I gonna post it? Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning, you'll see the videos. So anyhow, <laughs> check us out, mercurynews.com, eastbaytimes.com. Um, thank you for watching.